Hey guys, it's Graham, what's cracking? And I have a feedback request from you guys because despite the number of years that I have been writing and publishing and the stretch of time that I've spent doing this channel, if you were to put me in a room with electrodes connected to various sensitive regions of my body and say, identify your target market or else, brother, I'm riding that ACDC wave. Uh, because I'm still struggling to figure out how to quantify that. What the heck is my audience? I've gone to writing conventions and I have sat in on the marketing classes and I always get frustrated at the part where they say, okay, step one is you got to figure out your, uh, your target audience. And then they immediately skip to step two. And I, I always want to say like, no, like, okay, that's step one. But how do I do that one? <laughs> ah! Uh, I, and I still find that to be the most frustrating part of marketing is if I were to describe who I'm trying to pitch my books to, how would I do it? What are the parameters? It's easy to just say everybody, but obviously out of the, uh, the small sample size that I have, it's not everybody that is interested in my books. I could compare them to other books and it's not necessarily a hard and fast rule to say that, oh, like only these demographics like my stuff, generally these demographics like my stuff, but I, I couldn't just say like, oh, well, these books are only for male readers between the ages of 18 and 45 or whatever. It's tricky to nail down. I still don't know how to do it. I think of large properties that tend to have their audiences defined for them. Um, the easy ones to go to, let's say, for example, Star Wars, Marvel, uh, Star Trek, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. So Lord of the Rings' audience is going to be predominantly male. The, not necessarily because like the cast of these books are, are predominantly male, but just because the focus tends to be on things that men are interested in. There are still uh, just legions of female fans of the books and the films out there. If you were to sit down these two demographics, men and women, and ask them what they love about them, there would be some overlap, but I imagine they would be focusing on different things. Tolkien wasn't trying to write to only men or only women. He had something personal and profound that he wanted to say with his works. And so he, he chased that, and then the marketing and stuff came later. I wonder what he would say if you asked him, who are your books for? He would say, everybody. I imagine most writers would say everybody, with the exception of the diehard genre guys who would be able to say, I write specifically for urban fantasy guys or sci-fi guys or, or traditional fantasy or quest fantasy. Like, Is a genre a target market? I still don't know. I've listened to a couple of episodes of that novel marketing podcast, and I've gotten some better ideas, but I still couldn't give you a succinct 25 words or less answer. Based on my YouTube analytics, my audience is mostly American, mostly male, mostly uh, old enough to possess a firearm in all 50 states, but not too much older than I am. And if you remove the, uh, the curve thrower, which is my Mayflower video, that demographic range gets even tighter and narrower. Most of the people who are interested in what I write and what I create are similar to me demographically. But I don't think that what I'm writing is exclusive to a demographic market. Uh, I believe that it's people who are interested in a, a certain type of experience with a book. I have yet to publish anything that is longer than 100,000 words in print. I'm not at the point yet with any of my projects where I feel like I have that much to say or that I command that kind of attention span. The shortest published thing that I've got out right now, I believe, is Mr. Friday at around twenty to 25,000 words. Kill the Beast is around 25,000 words. The longest one that I have is it's either Patriot's Game or The Hero Next Door at around 90,000. and That's it. Uh, the one that I just released, uh, Howling Wilderness, is around 80. And that feels like a comfortable length. Like That's a good meaty Grant Bradley book. Taking it to the other big properties, Marvel started out mostly as a boy brand. It was 
written and created by men. The, uh, the original comics, those characters largely got popular with men. They added female characters to the lineup. Uh, and girls thought that the cartoons were cool and some of the comics were cool, but they were, they were rarer, obviously, than the male audience. And then uh, they started making the movies. And again, like girls would show up for those movies, but they would have a different reason for being there than guys. You rarely see that the reverse is true, where if there's a, a female-centric property that really takes off, guys don't necessarily get into it a, a whole lot, like you know, say at scale, unless their girlfriends are dragging them into it. And the, the greatest example of this is probably Twilight. Within the last 20 years, yeah, there were dudes who read those books, um, not a lot. And uh, if they went to the movies, it's because their girlfriends made them. <laughs> Uh, you get a different experience with uh, with knowing that target market. Stephanie Meyer was writing for people who were like her, whether it's exclusively because they were women or because they were interested in a certain thing. In this case, um, overanalyzing teenage emotions to the uttermost farthing. There were people at a, a, a huge scale that really, really wanted that and made her a millionaire several times over for it. If you were to sit J.K. Rowling down and ask her, who was your target market when you created Harry Potter? Young readers? Is, is that it? Is that all there is to it? Who was George Lucas aiming his work at when he created Star Wars? I highly, highly doubt, and I've read his uh, biography, I highly doubt that he was really setting out to create the expansive universe that ended up sprouting from Star Wars. It just became this monumental success. He was much more interested in the, uh, the technical and the creation side of all that. I need to, uh, to do a video about that book. It ended up making my best of year list for this year. Um, Marvel, Star Wars, yeah, they, they've all gone through this, this thing where like they, they had a, a built-in market. That's what made the initial properties larger. And then a company comes in and says, okay, cool, like, we want this to be expanded, which is fine, like, there can be room for expansion, and then you get the ideologues to come in and say, okay, well, now we want to take it away from the people for whom it was originally popular, and uh, take it in a completely other direction, and if they complain about it, if the, uh, if the originals and the diehards complain about it, we'll just call them names, which has been a, a very strange marketing strategy, to say the least. I think about the Captain Marvel movie from about five years ago and how uh, Brie Larson got up. She says, like, I don't care what a 40-year-old man thinks about this movie. It wasn't made for you. And I thought, well, here's the problem. It's integrally connected to something that definitely was made for that demographic and was built on the popularity that it had with that demographic. That movie specifically was attached to the success of Infinity War and implied that there was going to be a, a powerful connection to Endgame, ended up not being the case. And we're seeing the same thing now play out at a, at a different level with the Agatha All Along show. I was listening to a, a entertainment podcast that was discussing it, and one of the guys pointed out, because can you imagine what connection this has at all to anything else in the MCU. Could you imagine any of the Avengers or even the, the lesser characters in their orbit dropping in on this show? Because I guess so far the only ones are um, Agatha and then like one of Wanda Maximoff's like weird phantom children or or whatever. It's, it's just such an oddball, like aimed at a very exclusive niche market, which apparently appears to be like single women, 40 and older. And... Uh, and I'm not saying this next part is a jab or anything, uh, homosexuals. That's been a big part of the uh, the marketing and the, the brouhaha around it is like, oh, we're, we're making the gayest Marvel show. It's like, okay, that's a massive departure from the built-in audience, which isn't there for identity politics and doesn't really care about any of that. The, the audience, for the most part, is going to be heterosexual males with power fantasies and wanting to fly around and punch bad guys and there will be girls that are interested in that, and uh, there are female characters that they'll show up for, but men and women are largely interested in, in different things, and sometimes they cross over. I read Twilight when I was still single. My wife got me into Pride and Prejudice. They, these are 
properties that I've had different experiences with. I've also been able to make observations off of them. And oftentimes I'll jump in on something and uh, I'll try it out. And it won't necessarily be that like, oh, this is an absolute dog crap book or dog crap movie or whatever. My observation more now is like this, this wasn't made for someone like me because I have no interest in any component of this. I just think it's funny. <laughs> you look at female characters written by men and you get characters like Black Widow and Cara Dune and Deja Thoris from John Carter of Mars. And then you look at male characters written by women, and you get Edward Cullen. <laughs> In fairness, you also get Mr. Darcy and uh, he's a unit. I really need to get that video up of my uh, trucker man reads Pride and Prejudice. It's up on the sub stack. Anyway, kind of a long winded way of saying that I'm learning more about marketing, but I still could not tell you what exactly my target market is other than it's apparently people that like to read books that are under a hundred thousand words that have some kind of speculative element to them, be it sci-fi or fantasy. They move at a good clip and uh, are more than just like fluffy, predictable genre pieces. I'm, I'm trying to write stuff that's familiar, but I'm not always trying to go in the most predictable direction with it. Generally, I write stories where the good guy wins by doing the right thing, but he's challenged along the way. And uh, the, the trick comes in trying to figure out just how tricky I can make that challenge be. But if you guys who are familiar with my videos and the few of you who are familiar with my books, if you've got an idea of how you would describe my target market, let me know. <laughs> Thanks. Drive safe. See you out there.